Hi, I'm David D. Hilser. I am a critical thinker, dissident scientist, and I'm here to tell you the truth about science, something most university professors won't tell you, 99.99, .99, but 9% of them, the mass media won't tell you, and certainly the science evangelists won't tell you. And they are going nuts. The science evangelists are on mass media, and they're call, being called left and right to explain what LIGO's big announcement, the gravity the det wave detector has now detected not only the waves, gravity waves, but in a light, a light event that corresponds those two things together. So what do you mean uh, we don't detect them? We can see it now. So therefore, all this stuff we're putting together uh, has to be real because we now can know that those two neutron stars have come together. And in their collision, we not only detect the gravity waves, but we see it. And it's the same thing. Voila, this is revolutionary. The whole, all of physics is going to change. Yeah, let's take a look at this. Let me tell you what I think. First of all, it's journalist's duty to make what is unintelligible intelligible to the average person. The science evangelists try to do that. Journalists try to do that. All the intellectuals out there try to do that. And so they all want to get on board. So what do you do? You go out and you try to read everything you can so you can explain to your friends at the party. Oh, did you hear about the latest of the LIGO? Oh, I didn't. Oh, you didn't. Oh, <laughs> you are stupid. And therefore, let me tell you what it's all about. Again, I'll get to that at the very end in my conclusion. But journalists, journalists, that's their job. Explain the unexplainable. Of course, a lot of times what I say it's impossible to understand because it's illogical. But in this case, it's a different problem. All right, let's take a look. What are they detecting? They are detecting some type of signal. Something, they have an apparatus, something comes, and there's a signal detected. This is very similar to what particle physics does, which is they accelerate particles, there's collisions, and they see the trails of what pieces are being blown into pieces, what things are being blown into pieces, and those trails are then said to be signals <clears throat> because we're expecting this type of signal, and therefore we've detected them. Seems logical. So David, you don't know what you're talking about. You just got to read what they are doing and explain, find out exactly what's going on so you too can be enlightened or go to physics uh, uh, and get physics at a university, learn all this stuff, and you too will understand all this, and you will see the light. Well, trying to show LIGO wrong using the scientists' own arguments, the scientists' own explanations for LIGO, the scientists' own reasoning, mathematics, all of that, using that to explain it wrong is impossible. Oh, that's easy, Dave. That gets you out of it. No, there's an answer to that. And the reason is, is because like particle physics, the LIGO gravity wave detector lives in the unicorn world. They can talk about the migration of unicorns, the mating habits of unicorns, the colors of unicorns, the intestinal fortitudes of unicorns, the molecular structure of, of unicorns, uh, everything you want to know about unicorns. <laughs> There's just one problem. Unicorns don't exist. And what are the unicorns? The unicorns are their theories. Their theories of what particle physics and what quarks are and strings and Higgs boson and all the, as Unsucker says, all the arbitrary attributes you put upon these things. There's nothing physical about it. There's no physics there at all. So the argument against is not a subtle problem. That's the problem. It's not like, okay, I see, you know, I'm looking at your math and I'm looking at the signal. I think what you're really detecting is this problem is we have no idea what people are detecting. Why? Because if you listen to what they're saying this time, they're saying, oh, we found the signal of gravity waves and light together. Now, if you ask a physicist what is light, they're going to say, oh, they're photons. Well, I thought they were waves. 
Well, they're waves too. Well, that doesn't make sense. That it's sort of the wave particle duality. That the universe is mysterious. I'm sorry, I can't give you an, an explanation because that's the way it is. No. Well, what is the that the way that is is the particle wave duality is because our models and theories suck. They're terrible. And we don't want to look at it or care about it because we've got to go on and build upon. We are in our unicorn world. If you want to get a degree and write a paper and get your and get your stamp of astrophysicist from MIT, you better study unicorns. Doesn't matter if they don't exist. You got to study them. And you have to talk about all those paradoxes. You got to talk about all those things that you didn't understand until you got to our university and you realize, oh, paradoxes are part of the universe. <laughs> They're part of bad theory. They're part of bad engineering. They're part of bad physics. They're part of bad computer code. They're part of bad they're they're part of bad policy. They're part of bad politics. They're part of bad economics. You can't have paradox. Paradox means your theory, your idea is busted. So why when I say that they're not detecting gravity waves? I don't say that. What I say, I have no idea what they're doing. They get, they say they get these signals, and yeah, you can argue at a higher level that these signals and and this could be, it could be something else. Their apparatus is this, but the only way I truly believe you can show this wrong is to say, well, you don't have a model for light. You don't have a model for gravity. You don't have any physicality whatsoever for it. It's all tensor equations. It's all mathematics. But if I show you a model that does give physicality for light, does give physicality for gravity, and, and knows and examines and shows physically how it interacts with matter, which is atoms and subatomic structure, then we could perhaps look at what they're doing and explain what's going on. If, if for some reason, it turns out they're really detecting gravity waves, then great. Right now we can't answer that question at all. My dad and I have a particle model. We could spend time looking at this, but we got other things. We just got done hacking diffusion, how light goes into rainbows. We think we know how that works now, but it's all physical. Real things, real particles, real things that move, real things that hit each other. But that's our model. Don't have to agree with it or don't have to care about it. It doesn't matter. But we are trying to get a model. So until you get a model, a physical, physics, physical model that is understandable then you cannot say what the heck they're doing. They're in a unicorn world, not because of what they say and do is wrong. It's because what they base upon, base upon their findings, their assumptions that they make, their models that they have, the paradoxes that are, permeate their models, make it so it is truly a waste of time and impossible to not only show them wrong, but to show them right. In their unicorn world, and their speak, and their science babble, and their physics babble, they come up with the words and they say what these things are. And they, listen, this is like Harry Potter for folks. You get in there, you get into the unicorn world. It gets pretty cool. Harry, po Harry Potter is really cool to the tune of billions of dollars of people who buy who spend money billions of dollars on books to buy them and they like them they make movies and people like them they want the next one they enjoy it but it's fantasy well that's what we have in the end the problem comes down to why we have these bubbles why we have these unicorn worlds and why people when they these things come out all the journalists 
all the science evangelists, all of those people jump on the bandwagon to figure out what these scientists are saying. They try to come up with what they consider a pedestrian explanation, an average guy and girl on the street explanation. And then once they get those out, the intellectuals come out and they go to their parties. They're here on YouTube and they go down below sometimes and make comments in my area and they just go to town and because they say I don't understand the unicorn world and do you have a unicorn degree? It's a pretty good analogy. I'm gonna have to do a uh, uh, sort of a, a sarcastic unicorn world thing. I think I think it really could go over but in the end it comes down to one thing ego. The egos of intellectuals Intellectuals are the people who read those articles, buy them, and then buy them in the sense that they believe they just want to repeat what's there and they try to, in the unicorn world, oh, I know the unicorn speak, I've been reading about it so long, now I can unicorn babble back to my friends and intellectual friends to say, oh, yeah, it's this, this, and it's always revolutionary. The journalists who write it, who talk to the scientists, they have learned and they're the conduits for those, uh, uh, this science babble in the unicorn babble, and of course the, the science evangelists, they're doing the same thing. The scientists themselves, among themselves, do this so they can give themselves a prize. It's really be, be sad, maybe probably a hundred years from now, when all these people run the, won these Nobel Prize, we're gonna look back, wow, people are giving themselves Nobel Prize over things that don't exist. But it's all ego, they don't search for truth. Most all of the people I know who I consider to be critical thinkers, uh, Dr. Alexander Unsicker, for instance, already put out something on Facebook saying, these signals, what does this mean? And he's right, because we don't know what it means, because it's a unicorn world. So I hope you get the idea that when I say, and many critical thinkers say, that they are not detecting gravity waves, the truth is they're doing something. We have no idea what they're doing and their idea of what they're doing is based on complete quicksand fantasy world so therefore even trying to go into their unicorn world and trying to explain how it's not right it's a waste of time let them let them run at the speed of light off the cliff into obscurity <laughs> that's the way i look at it a bunch of lemmings a bunch of lemmings who for they sell out for the moment so they can feel superior intellectually to us and that's what intellectuals are and that's what the difference between critical thinkers and intellectuals and i'm david de hills and remember what i say i always say don't take what people say on faith stay critical stay thinking i'm david de hills i'm your science therapist i'm trying to let you know and teach you how to recognize in this case the unicorn world and ligo and gravity waves and light and gravity and I hope it's getting through to you in a good way. Ciao for now.